I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of hearing what our obligations on the international stage are. I'm sick and tired of hearing about what our obligations to people all around the world are. When we have people living in this country right now, either legal immigrants or Brits, who are being forced into destitution and poverty, living in dire circumstances as a result of a housing crisis, and they are bottom of the queue, OK? They are back of the queue when it comes to local councils' priorities, MPs standing up for them in Parliament, charities, human rights groups, the media. They are absolutely back of the pile when it comes to getting things done for them. So I went to have a look at something I couldn't really believe was happening in this country, which is that people are being forced to live in shipping containers that are not fit for human habitation, OK? They are not at all. You know, rising damp, no hot and cold water at all, uh, bug infestations, uh, no security, so local drug addicts just wander in and, in some cases, perform sex acts in the laundry area in front of kids. Uh, you have rampant crime there, no fire safety whatsoever, a absolutely disgusting environment that people are being forced to live in. And those people, remarkably, despite the fact that very often they have young kids, uh, very often they are fleeing domestic abuse and uh, terrible situations. These people are vulnerable, OK? Despite the fact they're in that situation, they are on band C of a social housing waiting list. I want to know who's on band A and who's on band B, although I think we can all hazard a guess. I went and caught up at a, a shipping container centre, if you want to call it that, in Acton, in Ealing, in West London, which is, for what it's worth, under a, a, a Labour council, which we are yet to get a response from, uh, and spoke to a lady who was originally from uh, the Congo, who had come to Britain years ago and been living in a completely normal life, paying tax, working, etc., etc., etc. Has a few kids. Unfortunately, her flat burnt down. Do you know, fault of her own, flat burnt down, uh, and was forced into this supposedly temporary accommodation. That temporary accommodation was uh, a year ago now. Uh, I went and caught up with her, and this is, this is what she had to say, and just a, a warning for some people as well, that some of the images and, and everything that I'm about to see you about, about the way that we are forcing British citizens and law-abiding citizens already in this country to live, it might distress you. Live here is a nightmare, to be honest. As a parent, a mother of three, single mother of three, just live here is, is as bad as you can think. Anything bad happened here, anything bad. So I moved here like last year. My house got fired July, July 12, 2022. So I was sent to a b, &B then I couldn't cope with the stairs. So I moved here in September. So since I moved here, I was actually moved to room three because this, the condition of room three was so bad. My son got asthma and then I had a newborn in there. The malt, the condensation, everything, everything was just bad, really, really bad. I have to cry out really loud to call the council, to call the building manager, G-Day. I have to call his manager, Derek. I call my housing officer, Mubin. I call everyone you can think of to get help to move from that room because it was so bad. The floor was so swollen, water everywhere. The malt was everywhere. I have the video, I have the pictures. I cried, I called, healing repair. I just, I was just crying in there every day. Like a couple of weeks ago, I wrote to the MP, Rupa. Mm. I tell the situation of me seeing that has a mother living here. I explained my situation and she said to me, okay, good, then send the, you know, send the evidence, the picture of your situation. I sent everything. I witnessed the dealing, the drug dealer that comes here every day, every night. There are people that are coming here, they're always high. There are, are crackheads that sleep in the laundry area. Mm -hmm. I have a 15-year-old. I can't even send him in that laundry area. He doesn't go there. I live here for like a year, and my son only go to that room twice. Mm -hmm. I witnessed myself, people making out in the room, and they don't even care you are there. S sexual activity. Yes. They don't care if you are there or not. They're just going to carry on with what they are doing. If they're doing drugs, they'll carry on doing drugs. If they are making out, they'll keep making out. So you just pretend like they are not, they are not there. What's the bathroom situation? You open my bathroom now, you see the situation. There's some flies there. I don't know where they're coming from. 
Oh, I just don't know where they're coming from. There's some flies there. A lot of flies. Oh, gosh. Okay. I, mean, I, I don't have hot water at the moment as I'm talking to you. Right. So the no hot water. water no hot water for like four weeks now. It's just very disappointing for them to treat the citizen like this. We're just living like illegal immigrants. We are not illegal. No one is illegal here. Mm. We have kids that mm. go to school. You make a good point. You've come to this country legally, people born here, whatever, and you're being forced to live like this when some people who, let's be honest, do come here illegally are being given more. I am, I'm, I am not illegal. I'm legal and I have kids mm. in here. So I'm from Congo. If I'm telling you I never see anything like this, me, actually, I never witnessed anything like mm. this in Congo. Mm. What's going on outside this place is just, is ridiculous. For healing council to treat the citizen like this is, is it, it hurts sometimes. You just feel like, what is going on? Why do you have to treat people like this? And you go to your home, to your kids, sleeping at night and dreaming, when all the parents and kids are sleeping in the containers, and they're calling it flat. This is no flat. This is two, three containers. They divided by three or something, and they're calling it flat. This is no flat. And you have to hide from your loved one, from your friend, from your family, because it's embarrassing to tell people you live here. I live in Ealing for 15 years. I didn't know this place existed. I didn't know until I was sent here. Then I find out, what, the, what is this? This is not okay. This, this needs to be shut down. This place is not fit for human. It isn't. I went. I spent quite a long time there. It, it's not. And uh, my heart bleeds for the people. No, it is absolutely unacceptable that human beings should be put in a situation like that. Now, obviously, in that interview, the woman said that she'd written to Labour MP Rupert Huck. Now, she's the local MP. I contacted Rupert Huck earlier today. Now, she wasn't available for interview, but a member of her staff did get back to us very quickly, to be fair. And she said that her office has sent a letter to Ealing Council last month. She sent me a copy of that letter. In the letter, Rupert Huck wrote that a number of her constituents had complained about issues involving drug and alcohol abuse. She also said that she'd been alerted to problems with the cleaning of Meath Court, which is what that uh, centre, if you want to call it that, is called, with electrics and with mould. I also contacted Ealing Council. Now, I want to be very clear about the questions that I've asked Ealing Council because I fully intend to get answers to these and I will continue to be pushing in order to get them. So I contacted Ealing Council, OK, uh, and I asked them pretty straightforwardly whether or not they felt that these conditions were fit for human habitation. It's a straightforward question there. I wanted to know what specific characteristics somebody has to be classed on band A and band B of a social housing waiting list, because those people are on band C, which means that they're not getting housed anywhere anytime soon. Unfortunately for them, that is the way that they are going to have to continue to live their lives for as long as it takes for us to build more houses, which we're not doing. I want to know why the council hasn't fitted proper CCTV or secured gates to stop people getting in there. And I want to know how much available housing stock there is in Ealing. And these are questions that I think will be worthwhile being asked to every single council right across the country at the moment. We have ordinary people, taxpayers, living in those situations. And I think that that is absolutely bang out of order. Tell me more about our obligations to the rest of the world, please. GBviews at gbnews.com.